everybody, it's your pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences bringing you Monday Minutes. We're in the thick of January, nearing the end of January, and it is pretty, pretty busy in the communities. And uh, I wanted to take some of your suggestions. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about how do you sequence candy canes? How do you sequence arches? How do you sequence house? Sequencing can be such... Uh, uh, an interesting process depending on your background. If you have a musical background, it could help. Maybe theater, uh, left brain, right brain. There's There could be a disconnect between that whole idea that I know what I'm looking for in my head. How do I get it onto the software? How do I make X lights, make lights bounce to music? And if you don't have a musical background, or maybe you have the engineering mind where you know, you could build just about anything, but the idea of being musically creative or dealing with colors, or maybe you're a little bit like me, sort of partially colorblind, can't help it, I was born that way. Uh, how do I deal with that? I mean, red is red, green is green, blue is blue, but are they really? Uh, well, not always. So I'll talk about some of the tools. Now, I've done previous videos where I talk about Moises, where I talk about ChatGPT, but I wanna show you today my process when I'm working in X Lights, where I start from the point that I've brought the music in to building the timings to choosing colors, and then, then magically, it's time to start sequencing. So this may be a multi-part uh, video where we set the the stage with foundation, and I'm going to go through my process. This doesn't have to be your process. Whatever works for you, that's great if you're already sequencing, but if you're on the fence and you need a little, a little help, um, this, this might be right up your alley. All right, before we begin, please smash that thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel as it always helps. Let's get going. All right, before you, I have an entire... Uh, X lights sequence open with no effects. Now I have the music in there already and I'll just play a little snippets of it for you here at the beginning. I can feel it in the air before we know So a lovely intro with piano, a good section with beautiful lyrics, great voice. Then we get into... Go back to verse two, then we have another chorus. Then we have a nice sort of vamp. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is then the music goes to the end. And it pretty much finishes with more. And more, more. It's only about two minutes and uh, 45 seconds long. So it's not a super long song. So it's it's a good practice link for many people. Uh, where does this song come from? It comes from Epidemic Sounds. So it's a great service that provides a lot of cool music. Uh, these are not things that I can certainly include in sequences to sell uh, due to copyright, but I can use them to make tutorials to be able to include the music in that and completely covered on that, no copyright issues, which is fantastic. And the music, you can really find some really great things. So, you know, check it out, Epidemic Sounds. Uh, here we go. The very first thing I'm ever going to do when I'm putting together a sequence from the beginning is timings. Now, typically, I'll start with new timing because that's born with the sequence. When you create a new sequence and you bring in the music, you will get this new timing. Uh, but it's fairly naked. There's nothing chosen for you. And what I will usually do is I'll go in here and I'll hit the letter T and put a timing mark in it. So if I click, you can see there I did that. And now I'm going to hit delete that because I don't want that. And I'm going to join this back up. But I'll typically put these at these various... Uh, junctions in the song from beginning to end. And I'm just eyeballing it. Now, I, I, I could go in here real, real far and try to get it to lock in just right. But right now, I'm just looking for a reference. I just want to understand the construct of the song. Intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, maybe a vamp, and then, or bridge, 
and then we go chorus out. Okay, and sometimes there might be a natural. Okay, very typical stuff there. So that's an easy, easy timing for anyone to put together. Then it gets a little trickier because I'm going to use a great tool that was introduced to me from John Storms. Uh, John Storms or John Storm? I think it's John Storms. I think John Storms, he's brilliant at that. And by the way, uh, he's a really lovely sequencer and a heck of a guy. And, and I totally stole his idea and made it my own. And I still feel good about that. John's a good guy. He don't care. So one of the things I like doing is using Moises.ai. I've done other videos on that. If I remember and I'm smart enough, I'll, use, I'll leave a link in the description. But uh, what I typically will do is I'll have the main music, which is the nothing on my Christmas list but you. Great. That's the MP3. But there are other MP3s you can export, which would be the metronome. Piano, drums, bass, guitar, vocals. By the way, it might not be a bad idea to use these vocals for creating singing faces. In fact, Moises offers background separation. So you can have your main vocals and your background vocals from using that application. And it's so cheap to use. It's not 100% free, but it's really cheap for what you're getting if you do a lot of singing faces, if you do your own uh, it is something you should check out. And again, I'll try to remember to leave that link in the description so you know how to get the Moises and my other videos on Moises. Okay. So what did I create from those? Well, I created new timings for beats, for drums, and for piano. And to give you an idea, I'm going to go over here to my file sequence settings. And I'm going to change this to drums. So I'll go in here, I'll go to my downloads, I'll go into the folder where all of the mix is, and I will choose drums. I'll open this up. And now what we hear is cymbal swells, get into the chorus. drums is this guy here all right so this is this is pretty important stuff because there are a lot of effects in X lights where you can take advantage of their timing uh, timing effects or ability to use timings to get the effects to do things and there's quite a few of those and so probably in part two we'll look at some of my favorite timings or timing effects to use. All right, let's listen to this again. Now, one of the suggestions I'm gonna make when creating these timings is just this. Uh, I'm gonna click on add timing track. I typically will use the note onset. I'll click okay, I'll give it a name. I might call this drums too. And then I will bring the value of the sensitivity all the way to zero. I don't want all the extra weird sounds in there. And with drums, you can get some hi-hats and swells and things that might sort of interfere with it. So I typically will do that. And then I get my drums. So I do this typically with drums. I'll do it with piano, possibly guitar, sometimes bass. Uh, not so much with lyrics in here because that's really going to be for auto lyrics and creating uh, lyric timing tracks. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my sequence settings. I'm going to change this back to the main song, which will be right here in my downloads and done. Okay. Okay, cool. So that part's pretty easy and hit save. When you make these little changes, if, if you make little changes, just make sure you hit save. Now I'm currently using X lights version 20.2024.1, um, which that isn't really kind about letting me 
uh, venture into other layouts. So we're sort of stuck with this right now. Don't worry, they'll get it fixed. There's a bug about changing directories. So if you haven't changed to 2020, 2024.1 and you're on 2023, you're okay there right now. I don't think you're rocking a Christmas show. Maybe you're getting ready for that Valentine's show, but there should be no super hurry. Let them get the bug out of 2024, which I think has already been done. I think Scott Hansen's all over that. Dan Culp's aware. Gil Jones is aware. I think everybody's aware. So don't panic. Don't freak out. This is going to happen. It's, it's a new year. Be patient. These guys work really hard at making the software amazing for us. All right, here we go. So I have my timings. I'm super happy about that. The next thing is, what am I going to do about my colors? Now, we have our basic colors, our white, red, green, blue, yellow, black, uh, light blue, and some sort of type of uh, magenta. Yeah, okay. Well, those are great. You can stick with those. No problem with keeping with traditional colors. But I would challenge you, maybe, maybe stretch yourself a little bit and find some other colors that might better represent the genre of the type of music or the lyrics. And then this brings in the chat GPT, which I have talked about how it will forever change the way we use X likes. Uh, it helps me considerably since I am partially colorblind. And an example of what I asked chat GPT was to give me six hex values for six hex value colors for a song called nothing on my Christmas list, but you, and I put in the lyrics, I copied and pasted in the lyrics and it gave me the red, green and white and blue that are already default colors. Nothing changed on that. So chat GPT said, eh, that's festive enough. But what it offered on, on beyond that was silver and gold. And I'm like, okay, I don't use gold a whole lot. And silver, well, silver, silver, silver bells. Yeah, I used it quite a bit in that song. Um, but I took these values and I created, used the hex values to create custom colors. And then I thought to myself, I said, hmm, let's maybe, maybe two more. Give me two more. So I said, please add two more hex value, value color for the above song. And chat, chat GPT said, certainly here's a couple more for you and i received pink and purple okay i threw away the idea of putting pink in here because that ain't gonna happen here uh but purple purple i love purple so i put that in there so these are the values that i created here and by the way when you do this if we take a value of ff and four zeros if i right or not right click hello ron if i double click on this color uh, on the Mac, I know it's different on the Windows and Mac, but you can put hex values on either of the platforms and it will work just fine. Uh, you can see here that I can put in the values. You can just double click, copy paste. It'll put the color in here and then you can drag that color into the box and then that will be your new color for your palette. And don't forget, you can have a whole bunch of palettes. Okay. Beautiful. So now we have the music. We have brought in uh, Moise's different music for different timings. We've created new timings. And then we have chosen some new colors and we put them all in, all in here and we are ready to sequence. Pretty interesting. Now, in your mind, where do you start sequencing? We're not going to get to any sequencing. So if you're waiting for me to drop effects on here, it's probably not going to happen. But let's talk about this. Many people overthink the concept of sequencing. Okay, so there's some schools of thought. And I have experience over the what, last eight years or so in sequencing. And I, sometimes I do it differently every time. But there are some basics. And things to consider are isolations, negative space, and whole house effects or whole model effects or whole model group effects. And uh, the use of whole house effects can be very impactful depending on your layout. And you don't have to have 50,000 lights to have an impactful whole house effect, okay? Sometimes you might buy other people's sequences, maybe even mine, and you're thinking to yourself, how am I gonna get what I see on Ron's house to look halfway decent in mine. 
And there's some really cool tricks with that that I'll share with you in part two where you don't have to do that. You'd be surprised how you can make those whole house effects completely unique to your show without worrying about having to have all this coverage all over your house. Trust me, there are some really, really cool ways to make use of those existing whole house effects or whole model effects, okay? A whole model effect would be just basically a whole house effect that's on a model where I'm using a lot of the space on that model or model group to do certain things. And sky's the limit on that. There are isolations where I simply want things to be very intricate and isolate. And then there's negative space where you just want the bottom to fall out. You just want someone to go and just sort of like, just leave you sort of like, what's next, what's next? And that's sometimes the hardest thing to do, especially if you're someone that sells sequences because some of the complaints will be, well, it just doesn't seem like there's enough going on. You didn't do anything on that one insane cane. You know, it's, it's crazy. And other people will go, there's too much. And I always equate this to going to an all you can eat buffet. <laughs> Um, that, you know, you're not forced to put every item on your plate. Choose what you would like to have on your plate. Just knowing that you have plenty. You can always omit. You can always use the off effect. Or you can always just not map to it. So don't let a lot of effects scare you. They're there for intentional purposes. Because you may have a small layout, a medium layout, or you may have an over-the-top layout. So I like to cover all bases for all layouts from one sequence. Okay, there we go. That's a lot to consider. I think everybody should try to sequence something. I really do. I really think if you're curious about sequencing, you should give it a shot. You really should try it. It could be a whole lot of fun, and you certainly can take so much pride in your own work. And heck, maybe you get so good, you open up a store and you start selling sequences and Boom, there you go. And it all started from watching just one video. All right, I'm Ron. This has been Monday Minutes. It's all I got for you. We'll see you next week.